This is the all-new Turin DF83V grinder. It's a complete redesign of the DF line of grinders and a big departure from their traditional design language. And today, we are gonna do a deep dive into this grinder. But first, I have to extend a huge thank you to the team over at Espresso Outlet. I had no idea they were sending me this grinder. So it was a really nice welcome surprise when it just showed up the other day on my doorstep. After you watch this video, if you are interested in picking up a DF83V for yourself, then check out the link I have in the description. It's gonna be linked directly to the DF83V page on Espresso Outlet site so you can check one out and order one for yourself. So let's start out by taking a look at the features and the all new form of this grinder. The first thing you will undoubtedly notice is the design change. This new grinder is a vertically mounted flat bird design versus the old horizontally mounted bird design, which is a big change stylistically, but also in the functionality of this grinder. You can also see that keeping in line with the older DF design, we have a slant in this grinder just the opposite direction but we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. One of the things that I noticed right out of the box with this grinder is this two switch setup here. The bottom big toggle switch is the on off power switch, which is the main power for the entire unit of the grinder. And it also controls the LED display being on or off. And then this top switch here is just a push button switch to stop and start. I do think the two switch design is a good idea to have a main power switch for the entire unit and then a start stop switch for the grinding when you wanna grind. This ensures that you can turn the power off to the whole unit when you're not using it and also make sure that the display screen on the RPM control is turned off when you're not using it and you don't want that on all the time. I just wish it was done a little bit more discreetly. I wish this was just like maybe a little small round black toggle switch that was on the back of the pedestal here next to the power cord, just so it was a little bit more discreet and kind of streamlined. Now, granted, where most of us are gonna have these set up on our coffee bars, you probably won't really see this anyway, so it's probably a moot point. <laughs> As far as grinding power goes, the DF83V has a 680 watt high torque brushless DC motor with variable RPM control. And you can control the RPM from 300 all the way up to 1600 RPM in 100 RPM increments. I've been doing some testing with this thing to see if I could get it to stall. So I've been doing like 300 RPM cold starts with really lightly roasted beans on espresso grind settings. And it fires right up and munches through the beans with no problem. So I'm sure if you had like some really, really, really dense stuff, even lighter than what I have, which is pretty light, and you were doing cold starts on a fine grind setting, certain beans may just get themselves into a position where the burrs can't really turn and it stalls out. But so far, I haven't been able to stall this thing at all and I've been trying. I really hope that this is the direction that the new Turin DF you know, line of grinders is gonna go because I think that this is really nice and again, I've been really impressed with it so far. It has a quiet start feature, which seems to be very similar to the slow RPM ramp up that you'll find in like a fellow Ode. So if I turn this on right now, don't know if you could hear that or not, but it slowly ramps up an RPM um, as the grinder's picking up speed and then it stabilizes at whatever RPM you have it set at. Another thing that's really interesting too that I know some people were curious about, when you have it set at a specific RPM, let's say I have it set at 1000 RPM and I turn the grinder off, the full power to the unit off, and then turn it back on the next day or whatever, it'll still be set at that 1000 RPM you know, setting. So it does hold the RPM setting that you last used, which is really nice. Not only is this grinder quiet during the quiet start, it's just quiet in general all the time and operates very smoothly. With a decibel meter right next to the grinder running but not grinding beans, I was measuring anywhere from 54 to 66 decibels depending on whether I was at 300 or 1600 RPM respectively. In comparison, my other new DF grinders that I have operate from like 77 to 82 decibels just running, not grinding anything. When grinding with this with light roasted beans on an espresso setting, I'm getting about 83 decibels as my peak. In comparison, my other DF grinders, I'm getting upwards of 94 decibels as a peak with the same coffee also grinding on an espresso setting. So this thing is noticeably, noticeably quieter and just in general operates smoother. That being said, the pitch and overall grinding volume may be different depending on which burrs you have installed in this grinder, but that's kind of the same across the board for any grinder out there. Just like the newer line of DF grinders, the DF83V does have a plasma generator or ionizer to help reduce the static charge when grinding and just the overall mess. It's got an innovative declumper design that seems to work really well. This magnetic grinds exit chute that can be easily removed for cleaning as needed. It's also got a really nice, fairly heavy duty grinds catch cup with a magnet on the bottom of it and a cutout here in the base of the grinder so it lines up in the same spot every time. It's got an anti-popcorn insert, just like we've seen in the other newer DF line of grinders. It's got a nice rubber bellows to help with the low retention and a wooden lid. 
And speaking of the retention with this grinder, it is extremely low. This slanted backwards design that I was talking about earlier really helps to gravity feed not only the beans down into the grind chamber, but also the grinds to exit the chute a little bit easier with kind of gravity on its side, helping it tip backwards. On average, I've only seen 0.1 gram of retention at the most without using the bellows. And of course, with using the bellows, I'm not seeing any retention at all. The adjustment dial is very smooth and really easy to turn, and it's also really legible and very easy to see what your current grind setting is. Another thing you'll probably notice here on the adjuster dial is this little Allen screw, and you probably guessed it, that's for doing your zero point adjustment. So once you get your burrs, whether that's just on chirp touching a little bit or just off a chirp, wherever you wanna have the zero point of your grinder set, you would just loosen that Allen uh, with the supplied Allen wrench that they give you, rotate this to zero and lock it down and then your zero point is set. So it's really simple, it's really easy to be built in like that and sort of gone are the days of the you know adjustment collar that we've seen on the older line of DF grinders. The DF83Vs are currently available in two colors, this black like I have here and a silver, which is also really nice looking. These finishes are anodized and all the components on here with the exception of a couple little things are metal. So this is a very hefty, you know, beefy grinder. It weighs 22 pounds, which is pretty impressive. So it's a nice solid piece of metal. Um, it seems very durable. Again, the anodized finish seems really nice and smooth. Um, I don't have any issues or anything with mine. I've been sliding the catch cup in and out of here like crazy and there's not a single mark down here, you know, where the catch cup slides in and out. So it seems to be very, very durable. And I'm just, again, overall really impressed with the build quality, the form function, um, the attention to detail on some little things that just, again, now takes the DF line of grinders to the next level. So moving on to what I'm sure you're probably the most interested in with this grinder is the burrs and the completely redesigned grind chamber. Accessing the burrs is really easy. All you do is unscrew the dial adjustment housing here. After that, you just slide out this really beefy machined housing here that has a couple of really innovative features and is also apparently really dirty. So first of all, this machined housing right here is the stationary burr carrier. And you'll notice it's got a pin here, like a guide pin at the bottom and a machine slot in the body of the grinder. So that way when you set this in here and it finds that pin, it just slides right in and then it's self aligned and it can't move anywhere. So that is really nice that they, they did that to make sure that you know this housing is always in the correct orientation because one other thing that's important about this housing is this big opening right here is also the feeder from the chute. So when you're dropping beans down in there, it funnels the beans into this opening, which is the feeder for the top of the auger or pre-breaker. So that's really important to make sure that this always goes in the same direction. So the locating tab on here and the machine slot in the housing um, is a really nice touch to just make sure that you always have this in the correct orientation. Before we move on and talk about the pre-breaker auger or anything else with the burrs, I do want to talk about and address these six little springs that you'll find in here. I gotta say, I was a little bit disappointed when I first opened this up and I saw springs in there. The newer DF line of grinders has had the wavy spring washer, which is really nice and really nicely evenly distributes, um, you know, the, the force and the torque on the carrier, the burr carrier. And so that upgraded design was really nice over the spring design that was in the older DF grinders. I don't think it's a big problem or any sort of a negative to have these springs in here like this because when the burr carrier is installed and it's slotted in the correct orientation, there's no rotation against those springs. So there's nothing in there that's gonna be rotating against the springs that could potentially you know, pull one out or cause any sort of damage. It was just one of those things that I wasn't expecting to see that I was kind of shocked when I opened up and did see them. So just something to be aware of, but I don't think it's any sort of um, you know deterrent or reason for not buying the grinder or anything like that. I haven't had any kind of issues with them and it's been working you know, perfectly flawlessly for me. As for the auger or pre-breaker, it seems to fit nicely and have a, you know, pretty small amount of clearance inside the opening of the stationary burr carrier here and line up nicely with where the be the bean feeder is on this carrier. I was a little concerned at how wide the ridges are on the auger. And so I was kind of sort of thinking, maybe this is less of a pre-breaker and more of an auger just to help feed and funnel beans into the burrs. So what I decided to do to see if it actually truly was a good, you know, functioning legitimate pre-breaker, I took the burrs out of the grinder and I put this housing back in and I turned it on and funneled some beans into it. And I 
am happy to report that it actually does pre-break up the beans pretty good. There were a couple of whole beans that made it all the way through because of the, you know, just varying sizes in coffee beans and how wide these auger ridges are, but a good majority of them were completely munched up and broken into much smaller particles before making their way into the burrs. So I was really impressed and I can happily report that this is actually truly a pre-breaker and not just a feeder auger. So that's really nice. Both sets of the DLC coated burrs that I've got seem to do a really nice job. They both look very nicely machined and I've been really pleased with the espresso that I've been getting from these burrs. Even with the lighter roasted coffees that I like to drink, I've been getting some really, really tasty straight espresso shots and some really great shots for milk-based drinks. The body is nice, the clarity is nice, the sweetness is nice with these. Overall, these are just just really, really great performing, nice espresso burrs that I think a majority of you out there will be really happy with. Now, I don't drink medium or darker roasted coffees typically, so I haven't tested this with like a dark roasted coffee, but how well these perform with the lighter roasted coffees that I like to drink, I can only imagine that they will be more than sufficient and do a fantastic job for more medium and darker roasted espressos. And I have actually yet to try the brew burrs because I've been so pleased with the espresso I've been getting from this thing. I've been primarily just just pulling shots with it every day when I use it. So um, I have not used these yet, but they look like very, very nice burrs and I'm really excited to use them. So I'm gonna swap these into the grinder right now and we're gonna do a pour over and see how these taste. One thing I do wanna make sure I mention before I swap these burrs over, I did do an alignment test using a dry erase marker the, the typical sort of, you know, burr alignment check. Um, and I'm pleased to report that just like the other newer line of DF grinders, these were damn near completely aligned out of the box. It's very hard to see the DLC uh, on the DLC coated burrs using like a black um, dry erase marker. So I tried to use a green one and even a red one, but even at that, it was really hard to see. But from what I could see, I got a completely clean wipe all the way around the um, edge of the burrs here on the stationary and the rotational burrs. So I think the alignment on these grinders is pretty good right out of the box. And again, I've been really pleased with the grind quality I've been getting out of it. And it's just been producing some really great coffee. I'm sure you could get in here and hyperline and do all the standard things you can do with other grinders. But for me at this point right now, I don't see any reason to really need to do that with this grinder. All right, so there is our zero point just slightly off chirp, so I'm gonna lock this in. And now our brew burrs are installed, so I'm going to heat up the kettle, get some prep work done here, and uh, see how these brew burrs are. Hmm, that smells really nice. That was a really low RPM, 300 RPM, pretty lightly roasted dense bean. Um, fairly coarse setting, I'm at uh, 60. I just was curious, kind of a starting point to see where this is at. This looks really nice. So this is probably a little coarse, but I'm gonna brew it up anyways, cause I don't wanna waste this coffee and I wanna see what it tastes like and see how it brews. Yeah, I could probably tighten this up to maybe like 55 or 50, maybe even a little bit tighter than that, especially with these Sybaris fast flow filters. But that was a two minute and 30 second brew time. That smells really good. Really good florals, um, really good sweetness, tropical fruit, almost kind of candy-like uh, smell to it, which is right on par with what I know this coffee to taste like. That's really good. That is very good. I'm really impressed. Really, really good juiciness, nice sweetness and acidity, good clarity, some complexity to it, some tropical fruit notes, almost kind of candy-like sort of florals, um, really good finish. I am curious if the brew burrs will do espresso. From what I hear, they can't quite grind fine enough for espresso, but curiosity has gotten the better of me, so I want to see if they are capable of doing espresso. I did do one filter brew with the espresso burrs and it was good, but not as good as this. I'm just gonna go right to the finest setting. I'm gonna go like just off chirp. So let's say setting one, I'll ramp up the RPM. Yeah, I'm gonna do it right there at uh, 
basically 0.5, it's just off of zero. 18 grams of this uh, Costa Rica that I've been using on espresso already dosed out here, so. It might do espresso. If, if anything, it'll probably do a pretty tasty turbo shot. Unfortunately, <clears throat> the brewers do not spro. I got about two and a half bar <laughs> out of that shot, and it was uh, 18 in, 55 out in about 17 seconds, I believe. But who knows? Maybe it'll taste okay. Actually, that's pretty tasty, like turbo style shot. It's a really good coffee, so that helps, but honestly, that's pretty good. I probably wouldn't buy this with the filter only burrs if you do want to do espresso, because this is probably not going to yield you the types of espresso shots that you want, but the espresso burrs do a fantastic job not only at espresso, but they also do a reasonably good job for filter coffee. So if you're somebody that does, you know, primarily more espresso than filter and you want this as a one and done grinder, then I would go with the espresso burrs. You're gonna get great espresso and you're gonna get good filter brews with it. If you're just wanting this for filter coffee, then I would say all day long, go with the brew burrs, the filter burrs, they are fantastic. There are also the SSP options on Espresso Outlet's website if you wanna to upgrade to something again like those SSP burrs, um, you have the option for that. Right now on Espresso Outlet's website, this grinder with just one of the standard DLC burrs, either the Espresso or the brew burrs is $7.99. If you want the options like I got here, which is both the Espresso and brew burrs, the DLC again, um, as a package deal, it's $8.74. And if you want any of the SSP option burrs, which is the um, espresso burrs, the multi-purpose, or the cast burrs, it would make the total on this grinder $1,124. I believe they're $325 a piece for the um, SSP burrs. So all in all, for just slightly over 1,000 if you get the SSP burrs, or coming in under 1,000 if you get either the standard option or both the espresso and you know filter DLC burrs, this is an absolutely fantastic grinder. I am extremely impressed. I am loving the redesign. The build quality is fantastic. The features and options it has for this price point, grinders are getting incredibly good for less and less money, it seems like, every day. So I am really impressed with this grinder. Overall, it's just a really, really nicely packaged grinder. So what do you think of the new Turin GF83V? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. Take care.